is a video about the bones of the upper limb. Here they are represented in a fully articulated skeleton. They include the scapula, the humerus, the clavicle, as well as the radius and the ulna. And now let's take a closer look at each bone. We have the pectoral girdle, which consists of the clavicle and the scapula. We have the humerus, and then we have the ulna and the radius. If we take a closer look at the clavicle, this is the only point of articulation with the axial skeleton. And if we bring the sternum in, we can see that the clavicle articulates with the manubrium at the sternoclavicular joint. The sternal end of the clavicle is round in shape, and that is medial. The lateral part of the clavicle is more flat, and that articulates with the acromion of the scapula at the acromioclavicular joint. We also have the conoid tubercle, and the conoid tubercle faces inferior and posterior. This is the anterior view of the scapula. We have the subscapular fossa here. Laterally, we have the glenoid fossa, which articulates with the humerus. And above the glenoid fossa, we have the supraglenoidal tubercle. And below the glenoid fossa, we have the infraglenoidal tubercle. We have the coracoid process here. And if we turn it over to take a posterior view, we have the spine of the scapula here and the acromion process here. Below the spine of the scapula, we have the infraspinous fossa. And above the spine of the scapula, we have the supraspinous fossa. The glenoid fossa of the scapula articulates with the head of the humerus. Laterally, we have the greater tubercle, and anterior, we have the lesser tubercle. In between the two tubercles, we have the intertubercular groove. A little ways down the shaft, we have the deltoid tuberosity, which is where the deltoid inserts. And on the distal end, we have our condyles. The medial one is the trochlea, which means pulley, and this articulates with the trochlear notch on the ulna. And laterally, we have the capitulum, and this articulates with the head of the radius. On each side of the condyles, we have an epicondyle. So this is the medial epicondyle, and this is the lateral epicondyle. On the anterior side, we have a fossa here, which is called the coronoid fossa, where the coronoid process of the ulna fits in during flexion. If we turn the humerus over, we can see we have the olecranon fossa on the posterior portion of the bone, where the olecranon process of the ulna fits during extension. The first bone we'll look at of the forearm is the ulna. And the ulna is medial. This here is called the trochlear notch, which articulates with the trochlea on the humerus. This is the olecranon process, which fits into the olecranon fossa during extension. And the coronoid process fits into the coronoid fossa during flexion. 
On the lateral side of the ulna, we have the radial notch, which articulates with the head of the radius. On the distal end of the ulna, we have the stylus process, which is medial. And that brings us to the radius. Here we have the head of the radius, which articulates with the capitulum on the humerus and the radial notch on the ulna. We also have the radial tuberosity, which must be anterior. On the distal portion, we have the I mean the ulna notch, which is medial, and we have the styloid process, which is lateral.